and good morning you guys well happy whatever time of day it is where you are where you're watching this welcome back to my channel today i wanted to just do a video about travel nursing i did a video already about things you need to know but i also wanted to talk about a bit of a story time about the travel nurse recruiter i had she just wasn't it so i wanted to talk about like some red flag things to look out for especially this time of year this is when the rates are the highest in the winter time so yeah if you don't know me my name is abby i guess you can say i'm a retired travel nurse i'm just kidding I don't know if I'm really retired. Former travel nurse. I recently stopped last year in September of 2022 because I went on an assignment and found out I was pregnant. If you want to know that story, watch my last video, a couple videos back about my pregnancy, me telling you I'm pregnant. I think you can see my cat back. <laughs> Let's start with my journey on beginning travel nursing. When you begin travel nursing, if you decide you want to do it, typically word of mouth, that's how you find your recruiter. My friend put me on her recruiter and I ended up traveling with her when I traveled in November to December with a very popular, like probably if you Google top five travel nursing company, she's definitely part of one of those. It all started from the beginning, to be honest. The red flags. I don't know if I want to call it a red flag number one. Just hear me out. When you are becoming a travel nurse, as you know, there's 10 billion different types of nurses out here in the world. There's operating room nurses, ICU nurses, med surge nurses, med surge tele nurses, PACU nurses. Every hospital is different, so they need to know what are your qualifications. They want to know in the hospital you've worked, what have you done? What skills do you have? So that when they place you somewhere, they place you properly to somewhere that matches your skills. I worked on like a step down unit, which typically they also call a patient care unit or PCU, or a lot of travel agencies just kind of refer to med surge tele. It just depends on the way the hospitals work because the hospital I ended up going to in California, they didn't call it step down. They would call you med surge tele. Not all med surge nurses had telemetry experience. So that's just how they divided it. So basically they want to know your skills. What do you know? What have you done? Where can they place you? So my recruiter was trying to place me in med surge when I was actually med surge tele, which would have decreased the amount of options I would have had once she was applying me to places. And this was basically their fault because the way they were asking questions to my reference references who were being honest about the fact that I worked on a step down unit, I read my own telemetry strip, they were trying to word it differently and they have a whole separate department for people who are just doing the references. And so she was like, well, this is what the reference department said, so this is what you're going to be. And I'm like, well, you know me and Monica are trying to travel together. You know we worked on the same kind of unit. That's where she got all her experience from, to be a travel nurse. You know we worked on the same unit prior to her leaving. So if she's med search telly, you're not at all concerned as to why I'm being marked down as just med search. And then as gonna decrease our options to travel together that's not striking to you in the long term if I'm gonna do this for a while why would I want to limit my options no shade at all to like just being a med surge nurse is fine however when you are med surge you can only do med surge but if I med surge tell you I can do both and so that would limit my options I had to like fight with her to get her to go back and like figure out why is it happening like this and she was just trying to rush through so overall a red flag in the biggest issue with her we can call that red flag number one the whole umbrella of why I don't think she's a great travel nurse recruiter is because she's never looking out for the best interest of her nurses. It's always like a rush process just to get through stuff to do what's best for her. For example, she was kind of making me feel guilty that I didn't want to do any night shift contracts. She was like, oh, so your only days, huh? Yes, girl. That's part of the benefits of being a travel nurse. There's both options out there. And I know that will limit me, but let me limit myself. Like, don't you tell me to just be in one box. I'll choose my boxes and what boxes I've worked hard to become in. Like, no, that was the first thing. Also within that lack of communication, another red flag. It was so difficult to get in touch with her. It was like playing phone tag. She would call me. If I missed a call, I would call her back. She never would answer the phone. Like she would never ever answer her phone. You are at work. It's your job to answer the phone. Like she wouldn't schedule a time with me. They also can text too. Like they can text you. She wouldn't do that. She would just call me, leave a voicemail. If I didn't answer, that was it. So when I was trying to constantly contact her about these issues and let her know, hey, I explained my references. They have to redo it because you're reference department sucks and they're willing to redo it and they've redone it so what's the status on that and I would be calling her and emailing her and she wouldn't respond and so then I was telling Monica my friend that I've traveled with girl she's like not responding to me like you know I know we have about a month or so to go but like that time is gonna go by quick and it takes a lot of planning and packing and you gotta find where you live buy your ticket and figure out how to get there get your start date get your drug test so much stuff to get done your physical TB test N95 respirator test like you have to do a lot 
lot of stuff before. So I'm like, why is she like dragging her feet on and just responding? And she tried to come at Monica. Like I, as Monica's friend, was the one being difficult. Like, no, I responded to her. And then I would show like her the thread of the emails. Like, no girl, she wasn't responding to me. She would send me two words or something like saying, oh, okay, I'll check. Oh yeah, reference is submitted. But I'm like letting her know you need to follow up. What's the T says, what's the problem? And she wasn't doing that. And so finally, when I got her on the phone, I was like, yes, I get it. References were wrong. They already resubmitted. What are you doing about it? And then she would be like, oh, that's what you were trying to say? Okay, well, let me put you on a hold and go look into it. That's what I've been asking you to do this whole time. That was after she told Monica I was the one being difficult, that she was responding, but she was not responding. That was like, I guess, kind of the first two big red flags, like her lack of communication and the fact that the way she was behaving was not always in the best interest for her nurses. Because I had a different recruiter after her for this long-term assignment I had last year from February to August. And he was like always super responsive, super sweet, super open amazing to be honest when he was just trying to find me that assignment he was really patient because at the end of the day that's what travel nursing is it's kind of like playing the lottery in a way you know you're gonna get something you know you're gonna win it's like nine times out of ten you're gonna get somewhat of what you want you know it may not be exactly like your top top choice but whatever you get should fit the category pretty much of like what you're looking for and he was really patient where he was going through a bunch of different contracts submitting offers letting me know where it was how far it was what it was about and I would say no I don't think I want that and he'd be like okay cool great no problem no problem i'll go look into something else and it was not an issue and that's how it should be with recruiters there was another recruiter that i got from a different agency he was like super duper not responsive i had specific contracts pulled up on their website that i wanted him to apply me for and because it was busy time and i really hadn't officially worked with him yet i'm sure he had his top tier nurses he had already worked with or whatever and he like see cat ears or tail just completely ignored so basically in january of last year i was working with two different male recruiters from two different agencies one of them was the one i really liked that i described already and the other guy i hadn't worked with him yet either i hadn't worked with either of them yet but the other guy like i said he ghosted me until i got halfway through this contract that the other guy got for me in another agency and then he was like hey what's up you looking for anything so you think i just been sitting around here for two or three months waiting on you to respond to me which i'm sure he knew i wasn't but he probably saw my messages and emails like dang oh I never responded to her they always have to follow up and see if there's anybody looking for something so when he he had his downtime that's when he got back to me I get that they're probably really busy themselves they have a huge load but I just wish there was a better way of communicating than just ghosting somebody and then getting back to them when you can or when you feel like it I want to say like you should have a cap of nurses that you can work with but I don't think they want to do that because they want to make as much money as possible but then like communication skills suck. Those were the first kind of issues I feel like I had with her. The lack of communication and her kind of like trying to gaslight and lie on me and be like, oh no, she's a difficult one. She's the one not understanding. I already did this and I already blah, blah, blah. That all happened because whatever, we ended up getting the contract we got in LA. We signed it, we went. And then after you sign your contract and you go and you're there, you don't really need your recruiter much. If everything goes smoothly, like you don't have to talk to your recruiter anymore about anything unless something happens. So we get there and for the first couple of weeks, it was fine they you know send you an email or a message wishing you luck and just saying i hope everything's going okay that was pretty much all we heard from her for the first couple weeks we start working it is what it is the first issue i had well first thing that happened where we contacted her was we wanted to extend the contract was from november 1st to christmas day and we were going to go home for christmas and come back in january and do just the month of january and for some reason it was so weird At the same time me and monica decided we wanted to extend we contacted her and let her know and then she contacted the facility and then they were in the works of just drawing up the contract. That was kind of where we left it. As the weeks went by, it was like closer to Thanksgiving or us returning from Thanksgiving. We actually kind of simultaneously changed our mind for a different reason we didn't want to extend anymore. So when we explained that to her, she was kind of like, sorry, you already verbally said that you wanted to extend, so that's what you gotta do. And I'm new here and Monica has more experience than me and I'm like, that don't sound right to me. Just because I verbally said I wanted to extend that's not a binding contract you have to literally sign a contract just verbal words don't make a difference so she was basically going back and forth we would tell her like through the email well just because we verbally said it I don't think we signed a contract so I don't think we don't have to extend and she would go back and say no your word is enough and they can put you on the DNR which in nursing travel nursing terms stands for do not rehire so they can put you on the do not rehire list that like reflects poorly on all of us and she would just 
just trying to really make us feel super guilty about not wanting to extend. And that's like another red flag. Again, in the same category of not really being there for her nurses. She didn't even ask us why. She didn't try to get to know why. She wasn't there for us. It was just like a, nope, you said that you gotta do it. It's where it's best for me. I'm gonna get paid because of what y'all doing. So I'm gonna need you to do this. So we kind of ghosted her for like a week and she kept trying to like get back to us because she knew at the end of the day that she was just trying to force us to sign this contract because she really wanted us to. And once we stopped responding to her, here she is constantly blowing us up. Like I said, lady can't even hardly answer her phone or get in contact with her but when she really wants you for something, y'all, y'all, what you, are you, I'm leaving, leaving voicemail after voicemail. I'm like, oh, now I can hear from you. Okay, but I don't really want to talk to you right now because we said what we said and we're not going to extend no matter what. So we were asking more travel nurses that have way more experience than us, their opinion on it. And everybody said that is BS. Absolutely do not have to extend if you don't want to. She is lying to you. Like I said, we kind of just stopped responding to her and she knew that if we didn't respond and we just didn't sign the contract, she's the one that's going to look stupid because at the end of the day, she's the one delaying letting the facility know we don't want to come back that's up to her to do it was like a two week span of her lying to us and trying to make us feel like we have to do it and that's just a waste of time and that's what's going to reflect poorly if we wait to the last minute and we change our minds just let them know now and she knew that contract was going to come in and she knew we weren't going to sign it and she couldn't keep pressuring us into doing it so she tries to nicely pressure us into doing it by blowing up our phones and we're not even answering anymore so that's that within that span if you watch my first video that i ever posted story time basically a patient who had HIV, his poop splattered into my eye when I was taking him off the bedpan. I ended up missing at least two weeks of work because of that. I was dealing with that at the same time and then I really was like, you know what, I just need to go home because what ended up happening was somehow the poop got in one eye but I ended up getting pink eye in the other eye. Whatever, watch the video. I discuss it in my very first video. In terms of that situation, there was actually nothing for her to do. I was talking to other other people at the insurance and blah 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 they were the ones that were helping me out and I just kind of notified her and because she's so hard to get in contact with and she only wants to talk to you about what she wants to talk to you about she really didn't even know that that was happening to me at the time all this is kind of happening at the same span of time we decided we wanted to extend we decided not to extend and then the poop incident happened and then she's trying to like contact us for one thing I'm dealing with bacterial or vi viral pink eye finally we get in touch with her and in one way or another we have to just straight up be blunt and let her know that we were not extending our contract. Then let me pull out the receipt. Receipts, receipts, okay? So she kept emailing us as well, saying like, when are you free to talk? I think before we told her we didn't want to extend and with the way she was pressuring us, we kind of just stopped talking to her. And we, we kind of said, no, we don't want to extend. And she still was like, I don't care if you don't want to extend. You verbally said it. She says, hi ladies, your verbal acceptance is your primary agreement. Whether or not you sign the contract is secondary. On November 17th, 2021 at 4 52 p.m. The hospital confirmed the contract and it is in place. The confirmation was already sent. Our contracts team is behind in posting your contracts online to be signed. If you would like to do something else after January 29th, you are welcome to, but these were already confirmed. I was like, excuse me, when we saw that, we just didn't respond to her at all for a couple days. We didn't even know what to say. And then that's when we kind of ghosted her. It was kind of like left in the air because she's pressuring us and then we just ghosted her because you're not listening to us. And then we both decided, you know what? We just need to directly send her an email saying, we already made the arrangements to go home. We can't do this. So I said, I've made arrangements to turn home. I apologize for the inconvenience, but I did change my mind regarding the extension due to extenuating circumstances. Therefore, I was wondering what are the next steps in order to end the contract if a nurse changes their mind. At the end of the day, me even saying what are the next steps in order to end the contract the contract didn't even start honey because we didn't sign it that's her trying to convince us of something that's not even true there was no contract and i'm just like well if you're gonna lie to me and say there's a contract but what i gotta do to get out of it hmm because travel nurses don't finish contracts all the time. It is not uncommon. Monica said, arrangements have been made for me to go home. That cannot be changed. What is happening at home would affect the extension, so it's best I don't come back. I will not be signing the contract. Management is aware of my last week being the week of December 19th, 2021. Keep that in mind, because this is how shitty of a recruiter she really is. What ended up happening is, basically, I think we ended up talking to her on the phone. She ended up finally letting it go and saying, all right, I understand you guys won't be extending. And then, 
then I end up going back to work. I know it was the last week for sure. I think it was like the last two weeks. And the next thing I know, I was at work. Like I was working four days a week. I worked my first day. It was my second day to work that week before I was literally gonna fly home for Christmas. And at 6 p.m., I lost access to everything. I couldn't get in the computer anymore. I couldn't get into the medication room. Couldn't pull out any meds. I didn't exist anymore. Like I worked that whole day. And then all of a sudden, 6 p.m., I was kicked out. Called IT and basically they were like, oh yeah, it looks like your contract ended. And I'm like, that's interesting because why would it end on a random Tuesday? I don't get it. I just whatever I didn't get it pretty much what ended up happening was I went home that day well yeah went back to our Airbnb and I contacted the recruiter and I emailed her and explained to her what the heck happened she sent me an email back saying I think maybe they got confused when I, I sent this message that you wrote and she literally copied and pasted the whole email that Monica wrote about arrangements have been made for me to go back home that can't be changed what is happening at home would affect the extension so it's best I don't come back I will not be signing the contract. Management is aware of my last week being 1219. That was the email Monica sent and she copied and pasted an email that Monica sent being very direct with her because she was being so rude and direct with us. And she said that I said that. She literally just copied and pasted and sent that off as a way of canceling the contract, which is like the most unprofessional thing I've ever heard of. And just so you understand, the reason why we were saying management is aware is because, you know, as you're working on the unit, you have the manager or whoever is the manager of that unit and they were super nice and we just let them know we won't be coming back i know that we were going to extend but we decided not to and they were like all right cool but it's a whole nother group of people above them the ones that are dealing with the travel nurses and then dispersing us to the manager so i'm just a name on the list to the manager and then they get to know me so i'm just letting them know like if she sees my name pop up in january that i'm not going to be there and she knows that like i've sent her an email the actual manager will know for sure so it doesn't look bad but it's your recruiter's responsibility to talk to whoever they talk to who are responsible for you know dealing with the travel nurses and then they disperse us to the managers if that makes sense so since I wasn't able to talk to these people up here I at least was like you know what well managers I don't know what's gonna be happening but I'm not gonna be back and they were like all right cool it was nice having you you did great bye so that was fine but she literally copied and pasted an email where we were being direct and rude to her and sent it to them and that was her way of ending the contract in the moment I saw that thought about it and I was like I don't even make no sense but me struggling with standing up for myself I just kind of blew past that fact so basically we had to speak on the phone about it we were emailing back and forth and then when I talked to her on the phone I basically was like so I already missed out on all these weeks worth of pay because of that incident and then now I have to miss out on more work because you sent an email that confused them and ended my contract early that just doesn't sound fair to me like I literally can't go to work at all because if I don't if you don't have access to the system you're of no use to anybody I remember over the phone she said in one way or another it wasn't her fault and that there was nothing she could do and I was just like yeah nah and Monica was like excuse me that shit ain't gonna fly so Monica nicely wrote up a whole email for me to send because I wasn't gonna be able to do it so this is exactly what Monica said Hi, I was trying to call you in regards to last week, but I haven't received any response yet. I worked on December 22nd, which is the day I was kicked out of the Pixis and Epic at 6 p.m. because my contract ended, ended in full. I tried inputting the time and it won't allow me because basically when I was trying to put in my worked hours, it wouldn't even allow me to do it on the agency website either because it marked that you don't have a contract open right now, so you won't get paid for these days terrible the next part of the email says also the information you sent them copied and pasted that whole email about arrangements have been made i can't come back blah 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 management is aware my last week being december 19th was never said by me it was said by monica on december 10th and i'm upset that you will copy and paste that information that was meant for you and not for them instead of giving them our reasoning if you needed a legitimate reason to send them to let them know why i wasn't coming back which was me having legitimate issues with my health which that definitely played a factor into it with the incident it would have been better if you told me that you needed a good reason instead of sending multiple emails effectively saying we had no choice and were basically locked into a contract that was not even signed yet. As a result of doing that is why I'm having issues of not getting paid along with not finishing my contract. That was very unprofessional along with you saying it's not your fault which is what she told me over the phone. Like it's not my fault, what do you want me to do? I am forced to miss up to three days of getting paid so who do I need to talk to to make sure I get paid for all those mistakes? 
I don't know if I'm a different person now and to this day I would have been able to probably stand up for myself and been like who do you think you're talking to and send some kind of email like this but I'm so grateful that she did. I feel like I eventually probably would have been mad enough and been like nah you gotta talk to somebody about something because this issue is crazy but yeah Monica ended up sending that email. She literally texted me that in a text message and she said email this to her so I copied and pasted it and I was like and her response, in case you're curious, Hi, I received your message and have been working on this. Sorry, the facility contact did not reply to me until December 27th. They are working on changing your end date back to Christmas Day. I'm escalating this to my director right now. Thank you for your patience. She thanked me for my patience after all the bullshit she didn't put us through. You haven't gotten the gist of the story yet. Cooters who are really difficult to contact and really try to force you to do things you don't want to do, whether that be locked into a certain category of nursing, like I said in the beginning, med surge versus med surge telly, trying to lock you into doing a contract you don't have to do when you really don't want to do it, all those kind of things. It was just God telling me, sis, the same for you, because don't forget, the only other time I actually traveled, like got on a plane, was when I went to Seattle last September and I found out I was pregnant. So I don't know what the heck I was trying to tell me, but maybe it was travel, travel, nice and ain't for you. The other contract I did last year from February to August was a local travel contract where I was driving an hour to and from work every day. It wasn't bad. I enjoyed the hospital, the facility, and that worked out well. You know, I was able to renew. That's why that contract was so long without any complications, but the rest of them, honey, I don't know. And also maybe it plays into the fact that that long contract, I had a great recruiter, super responsive, super nice, super patient, willing to find me a contract that worked for me. And I remember when I debated about not signing it, he even was like, are you sure? Are you sure you wanna do this? He wasn't pressuring me into doing it. He really just wanted to know why do you wanna do it or why don't you wanna do it? Let's talk about it. I'm here for you. Cause then if he can hear why I don't, then he knows what to avoid and finding me something else. Or if he hears why I do, he knows what to look for when he's looking for something else. So for recruiters like that, gold, you need them because things change, things happen. You may go somewhere you don't like. And imagine if we were some, like at least the facility I was at was nice in California. It was decent. Imagine if I went somewhere like really crappy and then I had to deal with this crappy recruiter who, well, you really already signed the contract now. What you want me to do? Whereas, you know, the recruiter I had for this other contract, he was like, let me know if you don't like it. I want to know these things. I would never send someone else there. I'd try to get you out. He was there for me. So take everything I'm saying. If you're considering traveling, don't be afraid to stand up for yourself. You are truly your own boss as a travel nurse. There are tens of thousands of agencies out there, tens of thousands of recruiters out there. You have so many options. Unless you're like a really terrible nurse, like we I'm not talking about that category. If you are a good nurse, you're trying to do the right thing. Don't feel obligated to stick with one recruiter. You can even request for a different recruiter if you like the agency you're working with. Don't be afraid to ask other travel nurses you end up working with about their recruiters. That's how I ended up finding the recruiter I love. It was because at that nice facility we were at in California, another nurse put us on to him and we just called him and he was like, sure, I'll sign you up. And I ended up signing a contract with him and then Monica didn't. She ended up going on to do something else. So word of mouth is really really how it works. Closed mouths don't get fed in travel nursing. They really don't. So you just have to really be able to stand up for yourself. Don't be afraid to respectfully decline continuing to work with a recruiter that you don't have a great relationship with. Don't be afraid to switch. Don't be afraid to say no. Don't be afraid to demand what you deserve as a travel nurse. And even if that just comes with working a certain shift, like I said, I wanted to work day shift. Don't let anyone make you feel guilty because there's tens of thousands of options out there too for you to do. So you just have to be patient. Unless like you're not patient with it and you really just have to get a contract in the next week or two your options might be limited but give yourself a month or two start looking for a contract with the start that you want which is what recruiters do anyway so if you're on top of things you will be fine so if you have any questions write them in the comments if you have any other videos you want to see me talk about with travel nursing my little minute experience i had let me know but that's it for this video and i'll see you guys in my next one bye